My name is Jeff Folliter. I am a passionate patient advocate. I do this often and I do this passionately because I really do want everyone to know that it is not just possible to live a good life with CLL, it's possible to live a great life with CLL. A little over 13 years ago, my first doctor diagnosed me with CLL. And in a very brusque way, he informed me that I should expect six years to live. Sounds fun, right? I fired him. I wound up here at MD Anderson, and my doctor at the time, Dr. Michael Keating, picked me up out of the chair, gave me a big giant hug, and he said, you're gonna die with this, not from this. And that felt really, really good. That had a lot of gravity. It really did have a lot of gravity. You're here to learn about what's happening. Anything specific about your condition, what is happening with your treatment should be discussed with your doctor. I'm gonna start with you, Dr. Weirda. Uh, Dr. Weirda, you brought up a, on this immune system because CLL, <coughs> very effective on the immune system. We've done the COVID, the flu, the pneumonia, we've done all those good things, but there's been one question that was raised was the shingles you brought up. Is shingles okay with CLL? To get the shingles vaccine, you sh so you should not get the live virus vaccination for shingles. The one that's used most commonly now is not a live virus, it's Shingrix. It's two doses, Shingrix. Two doses separated by two to six months. So you get one dose and then two to six months later you get a second dose. That's all you need to do and it's not a live virus. You should not get live virus vaccinations if you have CLL. But and Shingrix took, is not. I think they took the first one off the market. Yeah, so I, don't I don't think, think it's, it's on the market anymore. Okay. What is your consensus on the RSV vaccine? It seems like there's been some, some differences of opinion. I know Dr. Weirder, you told me it's got a, a short um, effectiveness. So what's, what's the consensus here? So I'll start. I don't think there's a consensus yet. Right. So it's a new okay. vaccination. Uh, we heard a little bit of uh, data at the International Working Group for CLL meeting that we just had in Boston. Um, so I, I think there, we need more data around its effectiveness in patients with CLL, its utility in CLL. I, I don't see a lot of draw, uh, uh, drawbacks of giving it. So, but we haven't uh, we haven't entered an era where we're recommending it for every patient like we do for the flu shot yet. Um, that may come, but. Um, uh, it, because it's a new vaccination and there's not, there's limited data in the general population. There's really not any data available for us in the CLL community. Agreed. And, and just a more global comment about vaccines. You know, when we think about vaccines, because, you know, we, we're trying to, um, how do we mitigate for the infectious complications, whether they're bacterial or viral in patients with CLL? And we know that in general, many CLL patients that your all's immune system is impaired. And so your ability to mount the same type of antibody response to, to some vaccines compared to patients without CLL is generally diminished, is not as good. That doesn't mean you shouldn't get them. If, there, if the, the point is, is that you can get the flu shot and still get the flu, you can get the COVID vaccine and still get COVID, but if it diminishes the severity of those illnesses and prevents hospitalizations, that's what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to give you all any armamentarium that you might have to protect yourself from bacterial or viral infections that are running around so you're not as sick because one of the number one complications we see in CLL patients, and you, many of you know this in the room, infection, 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 right? So pneumonia, sinusitis, cellulitis, hospitalizations. So despite, you know, despite complications and things that we're talking about side effects of therapy, the other big thing we deal with is really infections and you guys all deal with this. And so you know, that really inhibits people's quality of life and recurrent hospitalizations. And we have many patients who go through this day in and day out. So anything we can use to utilize and diminish those infections, we're trying. So even though we understand that, you know, vaccines may not be perfect, um, we still recommend COVID because that was one of the, right, because that was one of the questions that came up on the yep. screen before is, 
Well, despite all the potential side effects of COVID vaccines, should I not get them? No, you should get them. Because we, we, we lived through 2020. We saw how bad it was. We saw how many people died. And CLL patients had the highest, one of the highest mortalities or morbidity due to COVID. So even though there are, we know, risk-benefit ratios for everything you do in life, including side effects potentially from some vaccines, we don't want you guys getting sick and admitted in the hospital due to, to these infections. So, Dr. Kate, I am going to... I'm going to drop a bomb in your lap. Uh -oh. Dr. Lamana has already addressed this on one of our Facebook support groups. Uh -oh. What did I do? But <laughs> it is a persistent do? belief. Oh, yes. I, I did know drop the a bomb. answer to this question, but I need I need for this to be reinforced in our community because it is a pervasive yep. belief. There are a large number of CLL patients that believe the COVID vaccine gave them CLL. Can you talk about what's going on there? Why do they think this? I will just say that there's no data to state that COVID gave patients CLL. What about the vaccine? Sorry, the COVID vaccine okay. gave patients CLL. It honestly is, I think it comes back to the statement that um, Dr. Nicole had made is that you know, a lot of people think that they get the flu vaccine and then they get the flu. And so ultimately, um, you know, when COVID was first happening, you know, we were recommending our older patients to get the COVID vaccine, right? And so you can think that, you know, given that CLL is a disease of older patients, there's going to be a chance that any older patient might develop CLL at any given time. And so it may have also been that someone may not have seen the doctor for a while and then got COVID and then went to go see the doctor and finally had labs. Remember that CLL is usually diagnosed incidentally, so it just might be timely. But there is no evidence that the COVID vaccine causes CLL. 